Hello again, this is Gannon Conley, and this is the second video in this series. In our first video, I showed you how to use the clone stamp tool to erase somebody who's photobombing your picture. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take that file that we created and its two layers and make a simple animation uh, and an animated GIF. First thing to do is you open up that file that we created before. And you can see over here on the right side of the screen, there's the two layers, the new one that we created, uh, where I've been erased that, and the original. Now, some of you may not have done this right. You may not have two, the two layers in one uh, file, and that's not a problem. I'm going to show you how to fix that. So let's, let's go and open those. Uh, those files. So now I've opened up the before picture and the after, and I'm going to I'm going to go to my after picture, and I'm going to set, set, choose on my keyboard Control A, and that puts the selection um, little marching ants around the whole screen. And then I'm going to say Control C, and now I'll click on my after picture, and I'll say Control V. And you can see now, over on the right-hand side, I now have two layers. I've got the layer where I've been erased out, and I've got the original layer. So they're, they're both together. So I can see the, the background where I'm still in the picture and the new layer where I've been erased. OK, so let's close out this other one. and. We no longer need this. I'm going to close that out. And so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go to Windows. I left this already open, but I'll show you how to get to it so, so you can do so you can load it yourself. Go to Window and Timeline, and that opens up a new window at the bottom of your screen. And there's this arrow that points down. If you click on it. You can see it gives you the choice of create video timeline or create frame animation. And probably by default, it's on a create video timeline, but we want it to create a frame animation. So if I click on that, it creates one frame for us. And if I click on this little square with the plus sign, it'll make another frame. And now if I change the time, let's make this first frame two seconds, and let's make the second one 0.2 seconds. Now, if I select the second frame and I unselect, I click on this eye that may, um, by layer one, that'll make that layer invisible. Now, if I hit this triangle play button, I've got very simple animation. So it holds two seconds on the edited picture and then flashes in our photo bomber. Now, if I wanted to, I could be satisfied with that and it's a very simple animation, but I think that we can do something better. And in the process, uh, I wanna teach you about some of the additional tools that are available in this program. Okay, so I'm going to stop this and what I want to do is I want to have Photo Bomber, me, get carried out of here by a vulture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File and Open. And in my same folder, I've got this picture that I took down at the zoo. And I think that's going to work just for our purposes, what we need. Um, the next tool I want to teach you guys about is this object select tool. And with Photoshop, their, their options just get better and better. Uh, it used to be that you would just draw a box around the object. Um, now, if I mouse over, you can see it highlights. It can tell there's something in this picture um, that it thinks is separate from the background. So if I click on it, you can see that it has now drawn these little ant marching lines around the bird. Now it's not perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna fine tune it a little bit. 
the it, it pulled in a little bit of the sky right here and it didn't get the talons. I'm gonna be carried away. I've got to have some talons. So what we want to do to fix that is I'm I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the magnetic lasso tool. And I guess first of all I want to zoom in. So let's let's zoom in here. And the lasso tool shortcut is just the letter L. So if I L. And now I want to reduce what I'm selecting. So if I hold down the Alt key, now I can start and follow along the line of this wing. And I'm going to draw a circle around the area I want to get rid of. Now that area is not selected. I'm going to double click the hand tool. And so Holding down the Alt key with the lasso tool is how you get rid of parts of your selection. Now I want to add to my selection. So let's let's zoom in on these talons down here. Um, and let's go L key back to the lasso. And it looks like we want to get rid of a little bit of this also. So let's do that. So again, Alt. I'm going to start right here and draw a circle around the thing I want to get rid of. There we go. Same thing for this. Okay, now if you can see, the magnet doesn't always get it right. So I want to make that just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to draw my own dot. Now, if I hold down the shift key, I can make my selection bigger. Oh, now if I accidentally click somewhere, I'm like, oh no, oh, don't worry about that. All you have to do is hit the escape key. All right, so now let's get these talons in here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. That way it will add and I'll follow this. Long talon here. You especially need to add points when the object you're trying to select has different colors than the thing that it's in front of. Or, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. You especially need to add extra points when your magnetic tool. It's going to get confused because like the bird's feet are a similar color to the branch that its feet are on. That's why the object select tool wasn't able to recognize. Okay, this doesn't have to be exact because it's going to be on and off pretty fast. But if I double click the hand tool, it'll make it to fill the screen. So that's what I want. All right, I'm going to hit copy, do control C. I'm going to go back over to my image that I want to animate here. All right, and now I'm going to hit control V. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is that this bird is really big for this picture that we're trying to do. So to make that smaller, we're going to use the transform function by hitting control T. And control T, if I grab in the corner, allows me to make this bird smaller. I want it to be big enough so that you can believe that it would probably carry me away, but not so big that I can't fit it on the screen. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. Um, one cool feature of the transform tool, if you put your mouse in the corner, the cursor will change from this black triangle to the, the curve, this curve with two arrows. That'll allow me, I can change the direction so that it looks more like it's flying. Okay, once I get it how I want it to be, I can double click and then it will finalize that shape. And now if I use the move tool, where the shortcut is the letter V, I can move that around so I can have it grab my shoulder. I can have it fly across. OK, 
Okay, now there's a couple more things that I want to be able to do in this image. And so there's there's a couple layers that I want to add, just make this that much more. I want I want this I want this vulture to fly from this side. I want it to grab onto my shoulder and then carry me out. But I want it to fly behind her and in front of me. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a copy of her and put it in a higher layer. So the way layers work in Photoshop is whatever layer is on the top row appears to be on top of everything else. So I'm going to select my layer one and I'm going to use the object select tool. And, and it did, I think it did a sufficiently good job for what our purpose is, is of selecting her. So now I'm going to hit copy and paste. Now I'm going to take this new layer that I've created and stick it at the top. So now if I grab the V tool, you can see that the bird vulture flies behind, behind her. So right now the layer with me is on the bottom. Uh, let's 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 switch that around. Put that layer. Let's get the background up one. Oh, it's not wanting to let me do it because for some reason that layer is locked. So to do that, all I have to do is click on the lock. So in order to do the animation that I want to do, we need to have um, all these components. Right now we've got a We've got a bird layer that I can move. Uh, we've got these. Um, and, but we also need to be able to move uh, the photo bomber, me. So let's let's hide these other layers for a minute that are in the way. Uh, I wanted to show you at least earlier, we were seeing the limits of the object select tool. So the object select tool can't seem to figure out that I am separate from the background. I, I can tell that my niece is there, might be able to tell about my nephews, but um, let's control D to deselect. Now we're gonna use this magnetic lasso tool. And we're going to use it to draw around me. Now, the part where we're going to have to add the most dots is probably on this jacket because it's brown and it's a similar color. At least as far as the computer is concerned, it's a similar enough color with our rocks that it wants to just think that they are rocks. It is a rock. It handles the face okay, but the hat also being brown, the rocks. Again, this is going to move pretty fast. We're just making a short little animation. And so it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Okay, once we go back to the beginning, you see the little circle appear. Now that's selected. So now if I say copy and paste, now have. I now have a layer of just me. OK, now there's one more change that I want to add just to make this a little bit better. I can see that when the vulture flies, it goes behind her, which is satisfying. But when it grabs me, the wing is in front of my face. And I'd like to make it look like Its wing is behind me. So to do that, let's hide the layers that we're not working with. And let's look at this layer. And I'm going to use just the regular lasso tool. And all I need is my face. 
copy. It's mad because I have the wrong layer selected. I gotta make sure I have the right layer selected. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And so now I have to put dot layer above. Oops, wrong one. The new layer that I just made. For some reason it has moved it. But luckily, if I click it automatically clicks. Okay, so now we have all of the pieces that we need in order to make our animation. And but we've only got two frames. So the first thing that I want to do is add more frames. So and to keep this simple, let's try to keep it under 10. So there's two. So I'm going to hit this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So now we've got now we've got 10 frames total. And now it's time to do the fun part, the animating part. Okay. So for each frame, the way we do the animation is we're going to change which layers are visible. So for this first layer, our photo bomber is there, and that's it. So we want to make sure the only, that the layer where the photo bomber is visible is, is is what we can see. All right. So next up, we need to have the vulture start to come into the frame, and we need our girl in the top layer so that the vulture shows up behind. Okay. So. This frame, the vulture comes in. And make those things visible again. And this time, we're going to have the vulture get closer. Now, I could, I could be really particular and worry about this wing going behind, but I think, I think we're just, we're just going to let that go. All right, so now I can let nobody there. Here comes the vulture. It's getting closer. Okay, next frame. All right, so let's now move the vulture so it's got my shoulder. All right, so again, we can kind of step through. We can see, there it goes, it's got me. All right. Now, just to make our lives a little bit simpler, let's go ahead and continue animating the vulture the rest, rest of the way through, and we can come and animate me in the second pass. So next up. So we're going to need to see those same things again. So we're, we're going to only worry about moving the vulture. So it was about right here. And so on the next frame, we're going to have it go. I think I think for the next frame it's gone. All right, now I should be getting carried away. So next up for this frame. Line it up with my shoulder where it was before. Let's get my face back. All right, so now I'm getting carried away. All right, we need to move again. Move my face again. Okay, now the, the vulture is all the way out of the frame. I don't need the vulture for this 
So we do need to move. I don't need the spaces now. My face is out. Bad. Okay, and, oh, and so for these last frames, again, we need to make sure only the layers that we want are visible and we don't want to see our photo bomber anymore. All right, now let's play it through. Okay. It's maybe a little bit slower than I like. So what I want to do, instead of using 0.2, I'm going to I'm going to select the first one, and I'm going to shift click on the last one, and I change the duration to 0.1 seconds. And now it's being carried away. I'm very happy about how that's turning out. All right. So now, now that we've got our animation created, I think the next thing we want to do is let's save it. Um, let's do file save as, and since I, I did a practice of this before, I'm going to call this animation two, and I'm going to save it. Um, read about this compatibility checker. All right. So now that saves it as a Photoshop file. And if I, if all, that's all I want to do with it, that's fine. But I do want to do the additional step of saving it as an animated GIF. So to do that step, we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to use this tool called Save for Web Legacy. Okay, when I open this window, When I open this window, initially it shows the whole image tightly zoomed in. Uh, and it also shows me that the projected size of this is going to be 30 megabytes. That's going to be way too big for an animated GIF. So the first thing that I want to do is instead of having it be 4,000 pixels wide and 3,000 tall, I'm going to change this to 1,000. And it automatically changes the other numbers so that it stays scaled properly. So now, it has resized it, and now it's 1.3 megabytes, which is much more manageable. Now, ideally, you want it less than uh, two megabytes or around a megabyte. And at this point, just to see if you've got it where you want it to be, you can hit preview. It will then open up your animated GIF in a web browser, and you can see what your animated GIF would look like in a web browser. There you go. That's, uh, I think that's. That is just the look that I was I was going for. Okay, so we got it where we want it. So our last step is going to be to hit save, and I'm going to put it in my animated GIF folder, and let me hit save. Okay, that's the end of this uh, tutorial on making an animated GIF using Photoshop and using layers. Um, I, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to answer uh, and if you've got questions. Anyway, um, hope you're having a great day and maybe we'll do another one. Let's see.